In this video, we're going to solve a little bit of a more difficult net force problem. This problem is more difficult because there are three forces acting on this object, and they're all going in different directions. Here's what the problem says. Three lions are pulling on the carcass of an 800 kilogram antelope. The direction and magnitude of the forces are indicated in the diagram below. What is the magnitude and direction of the acceleration of the antelope? Before we go any further, let's just write down what we know uh, before we start the problem and what we're trying to find. I've underlined in green what we know in this problem. So we know the mass of this antelope to be 800 kilograms. And then we also know the net force. That's indicated here in the diagram. Now there's three forces, so I'm going to have to add them all together. Um, but we do know that one, so I'm just going to put that in green as well. We'll be able to plug in what that is once we solve for it. And what I'm looking for is the acceleration of this antelope. Now I'm also going to put the equation I'm going to use to solve, uh, which is going to be F equals MA. And I'm going to rearrange this to solve for acceleration because that's what we're actually looking for. So the acceleration of this antelope is going to be equal to force divided by mass. Okay, so how do we figure out net force? Well, net force is the addition or the sum of all the forces acting on an object. When we have forces in both the x and the y direction like this, uh, we're going to have to add vectors. And so we're going to have to do this kind of visually here. Now, here's a little trick that you may want to remember. Whenever you're adding forces in multiple directions like this, what you want to do is you want to add up all of the x direction vectors and then add up all the y direction vectors. Let me just show you which ones are the x and y vectors here. I'm just going to label the x direction here in blue. So here's one x vector. And the y vectors here I'll label in uh, purple. So here's my y vector. Now this one going at an angle actually has both x and y kind of built in here. It's actually a right angle triangle. So this would be another x direction vector and then I'd have another y direction vector there as well. So I can really ignore that uh, vector here. I'll do it in red just to show I'm kind of ignoring it here. I could kind of ignore that vector because I've separated it into its components. Now I still have to find those sides, but once I've found those sides, I can add up the purple ones. Be able to do that, and I can add up the uh, blue ones there. Now they're traveling in opposite directions, so when I add them up, I would have this kind of short segment here, and I can plug those together, and I'd be able to find this kind of hypotenuse here, and that would be the force vector. Now it doesn't matter the order that we start adding these up in, but that's kind of what you want to do. You want to find all of the y's, add them together, add, find all of the x's, add them together, and then form yourself a right angle triangle. Okay, so first what we have to do is we have to take this vector right here, this 55.2 newtons at 30 degrees, and we need to separate it into its components here, the x and the y component. So let's do that over here. I'm going to redraw this vector. So we have this 55.2 Newton vector and we know it's at 30 degrees. And I'm going to solve for, uh, I'll call this y and I'll call this X. So those are the sides I'm going to solve for here. So I can use SOHCAHTOA, and SOHCAHTOA is this kind of abbreviation to remember our trigonometry. The sine of the angle is going to be equal to the opposite side, referring to this angle here, the opposite side, which would be Y that's opposite to it, uh, over the hypotenuse, which is this one right here. So that would give me Y. So let's start with that. So the sine of theta, and theta is our angle, 30 degrees, is equal to the opposite side, which is y, over our hypotenuse, which we know to be 55.2, I forgot that point 0.2 in there, newtons. Now I can multiply both sides of the equation by 55.2 to solve for y, and so y is going to be equal to 27.6 Newtons. 
point. So there's my first side. And again, I just I multiplied both sides by 55.2, so that canceled, and I just moved that over here. So I was multiplying that, and that gave me y. Now let's solve for x. So for x, I'm going to use cosine. So the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to the adjacent side, which is x. So we're talking this adjacent or beside this angle right here over, once again, our hypotenuse of 55.2 newtons. And so x is going to be equal to 47.8 newtons. And so those are my two missing sides. So if I go back to my triangle here, see that's, this is that, uh, the x here is the blue arrow going backwards here. This one right here. And then the y is the purple one there. That was the missing y there. Now what I can do is I can add up my vectors and form a new triangle. The reason, again, that I'm doing this is to solve for the force. Whenever we're dealing in two dimensions, I want to add up all of the y's, add up all of the x's, and form a new triangle. So let's start by adding up our y's. So I have this first y vector that I didn't have to do anything with of 24 newtons. So let's start with that. So there's my 24 newtons. I'm going to add to that the vector I just solved for there, the 27.6 newtons. And that gives me a total length there of 51.6 newtons. So let's actually redraw that here. So this added together will give me 51.6 newtons. And then if I look at my x's here, I have this one, 85 newtons, and then this other x direction is the one I solved for here, 47.8. So let's go ahead and add those together. Now they're going in opposite directions, so we can start with this one, 85 newtons. And then we're going to add to that this other vector here, which is going in the opposite direction, and that's 47.8 newtons. And so it's basically subtracting these two numbers from each other. So our new vector is going to be going to be about that big and it's 37.2 newtons and I can add that down here so let's go ahead and put that vector right in there that's 37.2 newtons and so when I connect these and vector addition just keep in mind that we always put the tail of the second one to the tip of the arrow of the first one like that and then when we connect them we go tail of the first one up to the tip of the arrow of the second one and so this right here is going to be the net force and so that's actually the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle so I can use the Pythagorean theorem here uh, to solve for the net force and so the net force is 63.6 newtons. Now we're also going to need the angle that this vector is at. So if I just look at this as if it's on an xy axis here, this point should be at, at zero. And if I just imagine this is zero degrees, then I'm looking for this angle right here. Now since this section it's in is going to be 90 degrees, uh, I can find this angle. We'll call that theta 1, we'll call that theta 2. And then I could subtract that from 90. So if I, if I did this, kind of work my way around a little bit to be able to find that angle there. Uh, the reason I'm going to do that is because I can use tangent because the tangent of theta 1, since this is a right angle triangle here, is going to be equal to the opposite side. If I'm looking at this angle here, here's my opposite side over the adjacent side. So let's go ahead and solve for that angle. And then I need to move that tangent over. And the way to do that is you take the inverse tangent of both sides. It's going to cancel tangent here. So let me rewrite that. And we get an angle of uh, 36 degrees. And finally I can come back here. So 90 minus 36. 
it's going to be 54 degrees. And so that's this angle right here. And so my force is actually 63.6 .6 degrees at 54 degrees above the horizontal. So there's my net force. I'm almost finished. What I need to do now is I need to take that net force and plug it back into this equation because I'm solving for the acceleration. So here's my net force. I'm going to take that up here. I'm going to plug it in. Now the angle isn't important. That just comes along for the ride because acceleration is, is always going to be in the same direction as the force. Those two will always have the same direction. So let's go ahead and plug this in and finally solve for the acceleration. Just zoom in on our acceleration here. And so the acceleration of the antelope is going to be 0 0.0795 meters per second squared. That's our units for acceleration. And uh, there's our answer. One thing we do need to add is that direction. And it's going to be at 54 degrees from the horizontal. And that is a more difficult problem involving net force. Just to recap, remember the, the trick here to solving is split up all of your vectors here into the x's and the y's. Just like I did, if you have something at an angle, just break it up into its components. And then you can add up all the y's, add up all the x's, form a new triangle, like you can see here that I did. Find the hypotenuse, and then we went back up here and we plugged it into our equation.